going to go down the rabbit hole specifically around video content. And I know you've been leveraging video for many, many years for healthcare, life science, med tech marketers and biotech and even pharma. I know I've been doing it for about a decade as well. And we're definitely going to go down the rabbit hole specifically around a variety of different HCP style video strategies, but then also how you can deploy it. So it's not just about, hey, we're going to talk about videos and you should be producing these, but how we're, how you can actually execute these. And some of these you may be familiar with as far as execution, but hopefully some of these are fairly unique. So as you map out um, your strategies, your tactics when it comes to video content. Hopefully we've got some new uh, ways that you can deploy your content specifically for video. So before we get into it, Kelly, though, I dug through uh, one of my presentations from about a, a decade ago. Remember when we used to talk about video and how it had a lot of superpowers? I think yes. most people now know that they sh should be producing video, right? It's like a staple for most content strategies, video, you know, as bandwidth grew, um, video became very prominent. And, you know, obviously now today video is predominant and it will continue. Right. And so some of the stats that I pulled up from this presentation, it's going to kind of blow your mind, Kelly. Um, but I wanted to run through them real quick here. Uh, let me put it up on the screen. So these are some of the superpowers. And, you know, if you're just joining us live right now, um, we're going to get into specifically a, a variety of different videos that you should be executing kind of on a regular basis, but then also some unique ones. And then we're going to connect the dots between how you can produce this video and how you should be actually deploying it. But before we get into that, I wanted to get into some of the superpowers of this presentation that I dug into like 10 years ago. And Kelly, you'll probably remember some of these. Um, and the first one here is people process video surprisingly 60,000 times faster than actually reading text. It's definitely mind blowing. Again, a lot of these stats I shared 10 years ago, just to get people on board that they should be producing video. But it's pretty amazing that when you produce video, that people obviously want to consume it more now than ever before. And there's obviously the superpower of that information. Obviously it's being processed much faster than reading text. And the great thing about video, as most people know, is people retain that information much more um, than actually reading text, right? So the stat is viewers retain 95% of a message when watching it on video compared to only 10% when actually reading it on text. And that's um, my normal media consumption, uh, Kelly, specifically, like when I go to someone's website to learn about their solution, or if I'm looking at a client's data, like I'm looking at to try to find, Hey, where's that video? Like, I just want a high level, right? Obviously most clients have a lot of text on their site, so they can definitely go, uh, deeper to learn more about the data, the solution, the device, right? But the video is obviously superpower when 95% of it is being retained. And then like my normal media consumption, people are four times more likely to actually watch a video than read text. I think what happens a lot of times, Kelly, and you probably have the same situation is people go to the website for the first time. Maybe they're learning about the solution, the medical device. First time they're actually looking at this data. And all of a sudden it's kind of a paralysis because there's so much text up there. And I think the person's mindset is like, oh, this is a lot of work. This is going to take me a lot of work to read through all this text. So if you have some sort of video up there, obviously to have that lean back experience, that's a great way to leverage the power of video. And then just the last superpower for video is after watching specifically a product video, right? People are much more likely to purchase. Uh, it looks like about 85% more likely to purchase. And those are just some of the things that I dug up, um, mm -hmm. Kelly, when it came to a lot of these videos and obviously the superpowers behind it. I think we all know that video, you know, should be a staple in your content strategy, but those, these are just some of the high level stats I thought would be interesting to share uh, during our LinkedIn live. And Kelly, obviously, you know, you've been crushing video strategies for the last decade as well. Like, hey, what are some of the things that you've learned over the last decade? Well, I think these stats are interesting in that I think they kind of reinforce and support, I think, our own experience, which is people just prefer to watch video. But what's really interesting and why I'm glad we're doing LinkedIn Live today is there's a lot of video being made out there. And unfortunately, there's it's it's becoming more and more difficult because there's so much mediocre video out there that you, you can't just you just can't do something with your phone and throw it up. I mean, certainly there are situations that make sense. But at the end of the day, you really have to be able to be more strategic 
Um, you can't just do talking heads all the time. You really do need to really have a plan and a strategy to really make your content, uh, your video content uh, stand out. So I'm thrilled to be doing LinkedIn Live today uh, because I think this will, I think we've got some really great experience and kind of pro tips that we can kind of relate to help people make good strategic video content. But also uh, the other important part of the equation is really how are you going to amplify it? Um, you know, it's it's a billboard in the basement if you just throw it up on your website and your website doesn't get a lot of traffic. So really excited to really dig into some of this today. Yeah, absolutely, Kelly. And again, if you're just joining us live right now, we're going to go down the rabbit hole specifically about which videos, unique videos you should be producing that you may not have thought about before. And then also we're going to connect the dots to say, hey, if you produce this type of video, how you could be amplifying it, deploying it. Um, so you can actually get more, right? Squeeze more ROI. Cause we obviously know video isn't the easiest thing to do execution wise. It takes, you know, a team of people to review the content, make sure they get the right content. And uh, it's typically more costly than some of the other digital tactics out there. But the great thing about video typically is, um, it's evergreen, right? Obviously, depending on the type of video that you're producing, some of it uh, has a short shelf life but most of it typically is gonna have like evergreen, meaning like it's gonna live on your website, on your social channels uh, for quite a while. So before we get into the unique stuff, right? We gotta tease people with this. Before we get into the unique stuff, um, Kelly and I wanted to talk through some of the, just the top four videos. So if you're a healthcare life science med tech company that you should be producing, and you may have these already, maybe not. So we definitely wanted to dive into these. Uh, Kelly, I'll get us started here and then feel free to chime in. Obviously, the first one is the easy one uh, for me. Um, we produce a lot of testimonials for clients and uh, a lot of clients and, and new clients come to us and say, hey, we've looked at a lot of your testimonials. We definitely need something like this. And um, there's definitely a variety of different styles of testimonials. One thing that I love about these testimonials, obviously, it's your customer raving about your solution um, and more of a transformative, more of a storytelling narrative. Like back in the day when we used to do testimonials, it was like kind of like where I'm standing. And then the, you know, the person, the customer would talk about the solution, but now you can get much more creative to tell that story using B-roll, using lab B-roll, you know, however you're trying to depict that case study. And then also like motion graphics and then uh, animation. So testimonial, you should be producing a lot of people are already doing it. Yeah, and I was just going to chime in here. So case studies have a, a really interesting um, benefit here. It is, especially when you're talking about products that you need to continually educate your, your target market many times, healthcare professionals, case studies are, it just kind of speaks their language and it really helps them really understand um, how your product is being utilized in, in a real life use case without obviously disclosing uh, the, the name of the, of the patient. But th this is just a great teaching tool and education tool for HCP specifically. Because once again, you know, you're, 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 you're describing this in a way that really speaks to them and they understand and there's real application. So I can't, I can't speak highly enough about case studies um, and really helping educate your target market. Yeah, spot on, Kelly. And we'll later on during this LinkedIn Live, Kelly and I are going to get into how you can capture a lot of these testimonials cost effectively. Um, and, you know, we, we definitely travel all over the country, but uh, there's definitely a unique way to do that where you can capture multiple KOLs customers all in one location. We'll get to that in a moment, but specifically for the top four videos for healthcare, life science, and med tech companies. Um, the second type of video is an explainer video and a company explainer video to be specific. And we've cranked out a lot of these. I've seen some good ones from other just video agencies cranking these out too. And it's a great way because it's, you know, it's, it's differentiating yourselves from the competitor, right? There's a lot of competitors in the marketplace, but if you can get your leadership, right, your founder, your co-founder, the CEO, um, to talk about, you know, the differentiation of your solution, your test, your medical device, it elevates your brand, right? And now instead of someone looking at your logo or your device, all of a sudden now they're saying, oh yeah, we saw your CEO talking about, you know, blah, 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 right? And it's a great way we like to call it just humanizing your brand above and beyond just a typical logo, right, Kelly? Absolutely. And 
um, you know, I, I love the fact that when if you can go in and really um, get some really great sound bites from your leadership, now you've got something that's memorable and that really goes a long way in starting to build that trust um, with your potential customers. All right, let's get into the third one here, keeping things moving. Uh, if you have some sort of medical device or solution, typically we're working with clients to develop these as well. It's like a product or like a demo, right? And so what happens a lot of times, people find out about your solution. They want to learn more. They don't want to talk to sales quite yet, right? They just maybe got introduced to your device or again, your solution. And they're just trying to figure out like, hey, I just want to learn a little bit more about how it actually works. And so the third top video that you should be producing or already have in your content library is some sort of product or demo video. Yeah. And, and these are great because it really helps companies scale. Uh, it, it really is um, very effective at helping that potential customer get a little bit farther down the sales funnel uh, and not having to have a one-to-one -one, uh, salesperson because many times, um, you know, your potential customers aren't ready to, to book an appointment. Um, so these are really great to help kind of extend your sales force, if you will, but do it in a way that scales by, by, uh, by doing it through a video. Yeah. And as it happens, Kelly, obviously most of the clients that we work with in the space when it comes to healthcare, life science, med tech, they're fairly comp complex solutions. Mm -hmm. So typically it takes multiple either research or understanding. So if you can make it simple, right, just learn to have someone learn about your solution before they talk with sales, a short demo video is a great way to do that. The last and final one for the frequently created videos that you should be obviously producing on a regular basis. And again, some of you may have a lot of these already, which is totally fine. But the last one, and these are in no particular order, I kind of think this is like, it should be higher up in my opinion, Kelly, is creating these, it's almost like a video series. So ultimately it comes down to, hey, do you have a product? Do you have a service? Do you have a solution, right? Do you have a diagnostic test? It really just kind of depends how you could produce these types of videos, but really it's um, an educational series. So if yeah. you think about it, like on the sales side, um, it's great. It's, it's a great video library that you could have for the sales team to go in there because most clients that we work with already know objections. Um, and if it's more on the data side, right, you could create a series of data videos that are talking about your newest release. Either way you do it, more than likely you can have some sort of ongoing video series that talks about whatever you have in the marketplace, right? These are some usual things that we've produced over the years when it comes to data series videos. Uh, again, those FAQ style videos about frequently asked questions. Um, those prospects want to learn more about your solution. So why wouldn't you want to have five or six videos already teed up that the sales team can share, right? That talks about um, those frequently asked questions that you normally get on a regular basis. The other one is specifically around, Hey, like a thought leadership, right? Most clients, you want to elevate your brand. You want to elevate again, your device, your data, whatever it may be in the marketplace. Thought leadership is a great way to control the narrative and start creating more ongoing videos. If you've got a great leadership team and you wanted to get that out there more frequently. Yeah, and these short Q and A type videos are can very much, very, very much can be kind of the workhorse. They do a great job of driving SEO, um, and then they also kind of deliver good information in quick little bites, which people like. People love short videos that get to the point, but they also have got a lot of utility as it relates to you know being able to be utilized not only maybe in email outreach, but also um, to help drive for good organic for your site. Yeah. And we're going to get into specifically if you have a video series, because a lot of times we get the, the question, Kelly, is like, oh, hey, I've got a whole bunch of videos. Like, what's the easiest way? Like, is there a tool, like a hosting tool that we can use just to make it easier for the marketing team to use, the sales team to use? So we're definitely going to get into uh, some ways that you can host videos besides YouTube, right? Definitely you want to use YouTube um, to post your videos on. Obviously, it's got a massive audience on there, but there's definitely some hosting tools that we'll get into a little bit later uh, during this LinkedIn Live. So let's go unique here, Kelly. Let's get into some unique videos that most people probably, they may have seen, right? But maybe they're not for sure how to execute or what it's called. And then we'll connect the dots specifically with each one of these unique video types and then how you can actually deploy it. So the first one is... And again, we've all seen these before. Um, they're called pre-roll uh, video ads. So like for myself, I'm a big sports buff. So a lot of times I'm getting the latest highlights for baseball or football. I'll go into like a Yahoo sports 
And before my sports breaking like highlights, um, there will be a short video ad. It's very similar to YouTube, right? You go onto YouTube, all of a sudden you wanted to watch this short video about whatever it may be. Before you can watch that important video that you want to watch, there's going to be a 15 second, 30 second ad. So this is a great way if you're producing like testimonial videos, this is a great way to use pre-roll ad, right? To reach your audience on this video level, executing it through, uh, through pre-rolls, right, Kelly? Yeah, absolutely. No, nope. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. And we've all seen these before. We've all, I think we're all kind of accustomed to it because most publishers, um, big publishers have some sort of video player like on the news section, sports section, finance section, this screenshot's actually with the finance section. And so before you watch that stock market today, right, that S&P 500, uh, before you watch that main highlight, you're going to get that 15 second um, ad. And on like when we run these for clients, for our programmatic display ads um, for video, you can't skip these. Like a lot of times YouTube, you can skip certain ones, but for the pre-roll ads, it's something that you can't skip. And so when we're strategically working with clients to develop their, their, their video strategy, we're like, Hey, it's great that you have a two minute video, but you may want to create additional shorter clips for something like a pre-roll ad, obviously for something like this, or just some shorter sound bites, right. That they can put for uh, social media. So that's the unique uh, video pre-roll. Again, most of us have seen it, but how do you execute it? Right. Kelly, how do you take that video, that pre-roll video and reach those niche HCPs, online. And the great thing about pre-roll is it's a variety of different, so you can put different testimonials up there, but how we're typically deploying it with clients is leveraging display ads, right? And using data, right? So if you think about it, you've got that video, how do you reach that niche HCP online? Well, the previous couple of LinkedIn lives that you and I have been on, Sean, who's our media guru, we've talked about MPI numbers. So this is where we're connecting the dots with that pre-roll and specifically an MPI number. So if you're trying to reach, you know, oncologist, medical oncologist, pathologist, dermatologist, OBGYNs, really any niche HCP that has an MPI number, which is required by HIPAA actually. So if you're an HCP, you have to have an MPI number. We can use that data to reach any variety of specialties for HCPs online. So think about your niche audience of HCPs going to like websites like Fortune, New York Times, Yahoo, Forbes, Spotify. There's millions of websites, right? And so we can reach them with this pre-roll ad as they navigate. And so as they navigate online, that pre-roll ad would basically follow them. And as we know, it's digital. So there's definitely different ways that um, we can optimize digital campaigns. But really the uniqueness here is taking that video asset that's 30 seconds Again, it could be a uh, testimonial and then showing that, right, specifically uh, to your niche HCP online. Yep, absolutely. Cool. All right, Kelly, let's get into the second one. And if you have questions, I know we're on LinkedIn Live. Um, feel free to populate it. We're also monitoring the chat. So if, if you have, do have a burning question that you want to ask, feel free to drop that um, in the comment section, actually, for this LinkedIn Live. Uh, the next unique uh, way to create video is digital out of home. And this is very similar to like a pre-roll. We've probably seen this before walking in major cities. I know I'm getting ready to go to ASCO just like you are Kelly. And every time we come out of ASCO at McCormick place, we see a lot of these led screens. So digital out of home, uh, it's like a billboard. It's an led screen. Uh, it's digital signage. Typically it's in like high traffic areas. Like I was mentioning from McCormick place. Uh, also notice a lot of these, uh, digital signs when I was in San Diego for a dermatology conference, and it was like a moving van that had a digital backboard and it's all video, right? It's all digital. It's all video. And it really just depends. So if you're mapping out um, specifically, you know, most of our conferences or most of our clients go to conferences. And so this is definitely like a top of the funnel tactic that you can leverage to really stand out. So if you have like a product theater, a sponsored theater, if you've got new data that you're releasing, or if you've got just a new product you're launching right at a conference, this is a great way through video, right, to execute it. Um, and we're doing a lot of unique things when it comes to digital out of home. It's not for everybody, right? It just kind of depends if you've got that major thing you're trying to execute right at conferences, right, Kelly? Yep, absolutely. It's just one more, one more tactic in an omni-channel approach, which is great. Top of the funnel, but it's just one more layer, one more exposure to your messaging and your video specifically. Yeah. And I think it's fairly unique. I know you and I have been running these kind of campaigns, you know, for the last couple of years. 
Uh, we definitely get questions every once in a while, but it's not something that's like a staple for most of the video strategies we put together. So we definitely wanted to showcase it during this LinkedIn Live because I agree, I think it's definitely unique too. And the cool thing about this, the technology's got so much better because now, for example, like McCormick Place and ASCO, you can choose certain screens that you wanna advertise on. So we've got certain partners that we can work with to say, hey, you know, we just want certain screens because there's a lot of screens in downtown Chicago. Yeah, um, also yeah. right, right? Isn't that because I was thinking um, so often yeah. when you go to ASCO, you know, you start to see, um, you know, uh, exhibitor ads already when you start walking through the airport all the way through, yep. you know, the, the taxi top and everywhere else. So it's really pretty amazing. Yeah. And that's all digital signage. That's billboard. That's LED screens, airports. Uh, obviously, with sh um, speaking of Chicago and ASCO, obviously, I mean, everybody stays up, you know, from Miracle Mile all the way past McCormick Place down south and all those hotels. I mean, it's 35,000 people. Right. And so a lot of the hotels, even inside the hotels themselves, have some sort of LED screen. So definitely a unique way uh, to broadcast. And you know, I'm putting QR codes up here and people are like, oh, that's not unique, right? Um, and, and it's not, it's been around for quite a while. I think the uniqueness of this is really um, what I've been seeing and what you've been seeing too, Kelly, as far as executing these. I'm seeing these more and more on the trade show floor. So a lot of times those poster presentations, the brochures that clients typically are, you know, printing out and bringing to the conference, I'm seeing less and less of these. And really, if you want to, you know, um, learn more about that poster, that data, that research, there's typically a QR code um, sometimes on that printout or like literally in this case on the screen, like it's part of the booth. Right. And most people may be not familiar like QR code again. What does that stand for? Well, it's actually quick response. So when we're setting these up for clients, we're saying, hey, make sure when they scan that with their QR code, you're taking them somewhere specific that they want to learn more about whatever it may be, the device, the data. Um, a lot of times I've scanned these in a booth before Kelly, and I was just taken to a, the, what, their website. And then it was my job to navigate, right? This is a quick response, right? So if it is about a certain product or solution or diagnostic test, you want to go to that particular page of the website. But where we're seeing at least better responses, again, these are people on the move, right? If it's at a conference, they're mobile, they're scanning it and moving on to the next thing. So you have a fraction of a second to be able to do that. You don't want to put a lot of text on there. Um, yeah. Typically, the best way to execute these is having some sort of video, right, Kelly? Absolutely. And, and I think this is where I see so many marketers uh, miss out. You know, it's it's a little disappointing to go click it. And it, like you said, it takes you to a website. So I think this is an area that isn't on a lot of people's radar that they should be utilizing video for these QR codes. It's a really great way to really engage somebody and 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 kind of continue that that um, momentum uh, once they've clicked on it versus just going to a page of text or to a website. Yeah, I was at AACR just a couple of weeks ago. Can't remember who the company was, saw the QR code, like ran over there, not really, but I walked over there and I scanned it and I was so, I was so happy because guess what popped up, Kelly? A video. Yay. Good. Yes. And it was about yeah. a specific instrument, right? And it was a short 60 second video. It was like high level, like motion graphics, I think animation talking about the instrument and it, and it like, as soon as I got to the page, it was like hit play and boom, I had 60 second video. It was a great execution. So yeah. Yeah. I can't remember who that company was, but kudos for them for understanding well, A, it's a conference, two, people are on the move, right? And what's the easiest thing to do to learn about a solution? You know, create a video. Yeah, and QR codes, we can file that under something that is old is now new again, because this technology yeah. has been around for 10 or 15 years, so. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, so let's get into the next strategy. And most people probably have maybe even seen our crew at conferences before, um, but this is definitely when we originally talked about, hey, what's a unique way that you can capture a lot of testimonials or your subject matter experts or even your leadership? Like what's, a, like what's an efficient way to do that? Well, in your booth actually, at conferences are a great way to do it. Uh, our you know crew goes to about 15 or 20 different conferences throughout the year. And I know we see other video crews too. And it's a great way. It's a great strategy because you've got all your customers, right? If your leadership's there, if your subject matter experts, if you've got new data that you just released, right? So it's a great way to capture reaction videos about certain things 
right there on the trade show floor, right, Kelly? Yeah, I'm surprised there aren't, um, you know, you, you go to conferences and you'll see a handful of video crews, but I'm surprised there aren't more. Um, but I, one of the other nice things about this is it's a really great way to kind of draw attention and get a little bit of buzz going in your in your exhibitor booth that you might not normally have if it was just, you know, your sales team and and yourself. So it's a great way to create buzz. Yeah, and you don't need to have, I've had questions before of like, hey, do we need to have this monstrous 20 by 30 or 20 by 60 booth? And if you look at the picture up on the screen, the left-hand side, that's a 10 by 10, oh. right? We're, we're executing where we've got some of the equipment outside of the booth. And we, we conform to anything that the association, wherever, you know, conference we're at, we're going to conform this one in particular. I can't remember. I think this was at, at ASCO last year, but I think we showed up early for this one. So we were able to move our equipment back. Um, but the great thing about this too, is it's easy to get your KOLs there. It's easy to get your subject matter experts on the trade show floor. Cause typically they're there already. And then if you do have a, a new booth or if you want to showcase your booth, typically what we're doing is we're capturing additional B-roll alongside the interview yeah. content. So it's definitely a cost-effective way to capture a ton of content. And we were just at a conference. Uh, the crew was there. I wasn't there, but they were capturing um, interviews, internal interviews with the leadership team at a conference. And I'll get into it in a moment, like where it was at. But they had nine interviews, Kelly, That's in one day. That. Yeah. That's lot but boy i mean just think about all the content that you're creating um and you know you you wouldn't do this for every conference but you know every marketer we've ever met has a handful of those conferences where they're they're really important they're they maybe they have some new data coming out maybe it's a product launch that really does merit um kind of a cost effective way to go and capture a lot of this very valuable content yeah absolutely and some clients have a major product launch, so they want to get reactions. Some clients, to your point, have research that's just, they just want to make sure to get it out there. Uh, some have updates to a solution. So it just kind of depends. But the way we tie this together, so again, this is the video strategy, video component you should be producing. And then obviously the deployment tactic for this, Kelly, is creating an on-demand video post-conference, right? So you've had all those great conversations with prospects that came to your booth. And then now we're video recording, let's say, for example, some testimonials, or maybe it's your subject matter expert, or maybe it's your researcher, we're capturing that. And then we turn it around pretty quickly for clients. Sometimes um, they're paying like extra to get rushed, right? I mean, we're pretty quick anyways to get it turned around, but some clients, to your point, hey, we've got this new research, we've got to get it, we're going to announce it at whatever major conference, but then we need to get it turned around quickly because we're going to do a drip email sequence to all those badge scans in the booth after the conference. And so we're, we're turning that around very quickly. And so when that email goes out, it's just not text heavy, right? And then all of a sudden they see a thumbnail of a KOL or their subject matter experts, and they can just click on that. And then you obviously watch that video on their own. Especially if you can get reactions, if you're doing something like a product launch or some really important data that's coming out and you can get some reactions, you know, that is so much more effective. The other thing I like about this is, you know, not all of your prospects can obviously attend all of these conferences. So this is a really great way to kind of extend uh, and generate, you know, a little bit of excitement and interest from maybe fellow peers um, when you're sending this out to people who didn't get a chance to go. Yeah, exactly. Not everyone goes to conferences. So <laughs> this is definitely a great way to capture a lot of that content. I mean, it's getting better. I mean, AACR just broke, I think they had an all-time attendance record in San Diego just a couple of weeks ago. I think it was about 23,000 people. I'm guessing is ASCO is probably going to be major as well. Mm -hmm. So speaking of conferences, um, if you're watching this and you have a sponsored presentation, you've got a product theater, you've got an industry expert theater, you've got a collab. Um, these are all non like CME credit type presentations, podium presentations, right? And so we're working with clients and capturing a lot of these too, because to your point, Kelly, not everyone attends conferences, right? So if you do have an important product theater, um, we highly recommend capturing that. And then obviously the post-conference strategy, that deployment tactic is to create that on-demand version afterwards. Yeah. A, lot of a lot of times too, Kelly, and I know you like this strategy, so I wanted to steal it from you, is doing a live stream. 
right? And so not every conference lets us live stream. Again, we get pre-approved and, and all that fun stuff. But um, I know we do it at a variety of different conferences throughout the year. And strategically, that's a great way to play it too. To your point, not everyone can go to a conference, live stream it. And what clients typically do is they share that URL with the sales team. And then the sales team shares that with physicians that may just can't attend. So yeah, live streaming, it's a great yeah. way. And yeah. let, let's, let's, let's talk about reality. <clears throat> How many times have you done a product theater and you're competing with other product theaters? And if, so if there's a bigger name or not even a bigger name, if there's just another um, product theater that is kind of sucking off all of your um, yeah. uh, all of your attendance and your, your uh, audience there, it's just a really great way to be able to then have it uh, on video that you can then send it out to the people that you need to. Yeah, there's definitely competing uh, presentations happening at the same time. I know when I was at AACR and even ASHG last year, they had, you know, the product theater rooms all next to each other and they were typically at the same time, noon, three o'clock. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you're an attendee and you're like, there's three different product theaters at the same time. Which one do I go to? Yeah. Right. And so if you're recording that and sending it out afterwards, again, that's just a great way to protect your investment because well, they're expensive, right, Kelly? I was, and I was just going to say, I mean, think about um, ASCO or an AACR where you have so many things going on that can pull from your attendees in the product theater. You know, somebody's doing a big book signing with a big celebrity. I mean, you know, it happens, right? So it's just one more thing is a, a nice insurance um, way to, you know, make sure you've got that content that you can reutilize. Yeah. And especially if you're not serving lunch, Kelly, like all of a sudden, if there's not like a grab bag of food at your product theater, all of a sudden people are like, well, I don't want to go to that theater just because it doesn't have like food. I see that right. all the time too. Like people getting there and then all of a sudden they eat and they just bounce, right? Yeah. Which yeah. it happens. It happens. But yeah. really the key is the key takeaway for this is capture your product theater. You spend a lot of money, protect your investment, and then create that on-demand version long after the conference. So the other unique opportunity that's kind of around conferences. So for this comes up when all of a sudden the conference says, Hey, you can't be in the trade show floor. You can't do this. We've kind of come up to it a couple of times, but also, you know, it's, a, there's definitely a different style when you're on the conference trade show floor. It's a little bit edgier, a little bit higher energy because you're on the conference trade show floor. There's people walking by those sorts of things. Some clients don't like that, right? They'd rather be in more of a controlled environment and to create that controlled environment. One way to execute it is like on a hospitality suite. Mm -hmm. I was just mentioning our crew was in Vegas yesterday. They were in a hospitality suite. That conference, um, I won't name that conference, but they won't allow us to be on the trade show floor. So how do you get around it, right? You do it in a, in a hospitality suite um, specifically. And so it gives you a, a more controlled environment, as I mentioned. It gives you a different backdrop aesthetically than being on the trade show floor. Obviously, some of the screenshots that we have up here, I mean, hospitality suites are typically nice, right? So there's nice paintings on the wall, there's flowers, there's different color palettes. So it's definitely a way, in my opinion, to upgrade kind of the look and feel of your videos. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I mean, as long as you're capturing some of this footage at the conference and taking you know, advantage of your KOLs being there, uh, you can execute either way, right, Kelly? Yeah, yeah I, I love I love this tactic. Um, it's, it's um, you can also morph it into, you can order some food in. So you can, you know, as you've got your KOLs or your thought leadership coming in, it's a great way to kind of schmooze. And uh, if you have a big enough uh, hospitality suite, plus you're also able to stay there yourself. So um, you're kind of doing the old kill two birds with one stone. You can stay there in nice accommodations. You can also do a little entertaining with your um, your uh, SMEs. It's, it's just a really great tactic. Yep, agreed. And then the other opportunity, which we've done a lot as well is, let's say the hospitality suites are all booked up and it kind of depends where you're at. Um, you can do this non-conference. It doesn't have to be a conference, but another unique way of how you can capture some of this content is through an Airbnb. We typically have done this in like a living room, like your background right now, Kelly, where there's like a fireplace, uh -huh. it's nice and comfy looking. Um, the subject matter expert or the KOL, they're there in the middle of the room. So we've got depth of field and Airbnbs are another easy way, an efficient way um, either at a conference that's close by, or again, it doesn't have to be, but you get that same kind of background look that you would get like in a hospitality suite. Yeah. And Jason, I have to correct you that this isn't a background. This is really my, my house. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, next LinkedIn live, make, make sure you do. We want you to do some sort of piano entry. Okay, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. 
All right, cool. I know we're at like 35 minutes, which is good. So I think we're probably staying for another 10 minutes. And I was just kind of monitoring the comment section here too. Um, so if anybody has comments or questions, feel free to drop those in. But the other, the last two parts of this actually for the LinkedIn Live, one of, one of this is we're going to get into right now repurposing strategy. So a lot of times, again, you've had these conversations too, Kelly. It's like, hey, clients come to us, marketers come to us and say, hey, this is kind of what we're looking at. And then we want to do a deeper dive to see if there's anything else that we can capture for them because just because we know the production process and how we can be efficient to see if there's anything else. We're going to talk about that for the next couple minutes. And then the last slide we're going to talk about, um, as we mentioned before, um, a video player, right? A hosting um, video tool that you can use beyond YouTube. Obviously, continue to use YouTube and posting your content. It's not the best when it comes to your video player on your website or your landing page. But um, when it comes to repurposing strategy, Kelly, I'm going to run through these and feel free to, uh, you know, jump in here. But specifically um, what I was talking about earlier about long form testimonials, a great way to create shorter clips from those longer form formats. Most of those testimonials are, you know, two minutes. You can create from those golden nuggets, right? Sound bites that are shorter, like that are 15 and 30 second spots to use for the pre-roll that I mentioned, or just for social media. Some clients just miss it, right? When they think about production. So we typically recommend that for clients. The other one is internal training videos. So one of the things we're gonna capture, or we've been capturing really on the pharma side of things most recently um, is almost training like data videos. So there's heavy research that goes on, heavy data. What happens a lot of times if I'm the salesperson, I, I'm not like in the weeds when it comes to this data. So some of the pharma companies we've been working with is creating internal training videos at conferences where we're capturing it. And then the sales team, right, is leveraging it to learn more about the data that was just released so they can articulate that back, right, to that HCP that they're talking to. So that's kind of re repurpose strategy, um, but it's definitely a great way if you have internal things, uh, conferences are definitely another way to go. And I know you mentioned Kelly, like podcasting, right? That was one of the other things okay. as far as repurposing. Yep. And I'll just, I'll add a, a couple more things here. So this is one that um, so many clients uh, don't think about, and that is how do I organize my, my video inventory? Uh, you know, you have a video here, you put it up here, you make a video, you know, two months later and you put it here. But what's interesting is um, that really does a huge disservice um, in being able to really maximize your, your video inventory, your video library. And this is, um, you know, when we work with a client, we really start taking on that role as content curator. So we know B-roll that we can use. We know, um, you know, the different interviews that we can maybe repurpose. We, we have all of this um, organized. And that's really important. I think most marketers are trying to do more with less and have very little time. And so they don't go and really organize their, their video library that can be utilized and leveraged in, in lots of different ways. So this is, this is a big one that people don't yeah. do. Often. Agreed. And especially if you have multiple videos, all of a sudden it becomes you know, a, a management process, an organization process to figure out where are all these videos. And we'll talk about in the next slide specifically some tools that you can use not only for like putting it on your website as far as the video player hosting like player, but also how they can organize it for you. And there's some great tools out there. It just kind of depends uh, how sophisticated you want the video hosting like tool to be. But when it comes to repurposing some other things like we were talking through, podcasting is great. So sometimes you're creating long form content for some of your videos. Well, think about just capturing, like extracting the audio from it. So like when we do video production, that's a audio separate. It's a separate track. So we can actually send the full audio like conversation. So if you're thinking about launching a podcast or if you have a podcast, that's a great repurpose strategy to capture, just to extract that audio clip from any of the long form content that you're producing for video. And then if we're capturing things in the booth, like the B-roll that you talked about too, Kelly, that's great to leverage for a variety of different things. I know several clients have reached out to us just to say, hey, can you capture booth B-roll and mm -hmm. photos too? We're just gonna repurpose it through a lot of different videos that you know we're gonna be working on for conference engagement. And then as I mentioned before, another repurpose strategy, if you're, we're filming like your KOLs, and you have some sort of instrument or you need to do some sort of demo, like we could carve out time to say, hey, why don't you have your best salesperson walk us through a demo that's yeah. like five minutes and we can capture that 
higher quality. I know you've seen this before too, but I've been on the conference trade show floor and I've seen people using their iPhone, right? Their Android. And that's totally fine. I mean, it's good that they're capturing that, but if you want to take it up a level and you've got a better demo, cause we can get that person, but then we can also get the instrument, right? So it's a great way to really maximize like that video shoot. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's talk a little bit here at the last few minutes, Kelly, about measurement. And I know, you know, that's important. And then also vi video hosting, like what are some options? We get this all the time. Hey, you know, we're using YouTube for a video player on our website. What else can we use? And then I'm going to talk about some of the video players, Kelly, if you want to talk about some of the measurements, that would be cool. Um, these are just some of the ones that I've used and that clients have used over the years. Uh, Wistia is a good example. Wistia will have basically the library up there for you. So you can host all of your videos up there. And then it has a really clean player, video player that you can put on your website or landing page. And so it uh, does dual purposes, right? You know, definitely continue to post on YouTube, but typically what happens with YouTube, one of the problems with YouTube, and I've seen this before, they, their video player, they want you to go back to YouTube to watch it, right? And so what happens is, it's and it's red, right? So if your brand doesn't have any red, all of a sudden you've got that YouTube player that's going to throw off your brand and style. The other thing it does, and I know you've seen this before, Kelly, too, is at the end of the video, it shows recommended videos. And sometimes it sh has shown competitor videos, right? Yeah, There's a way to turn that off. But sometimes, off. yeah, yeah. But sometimes some people don't know how to even how to turn that off. Mm hmm. True. So talk about a nightmare situation, right? Um, yeah. So the alternative would be paying for a hosting service. And if you've got enough videos, it makes sense because there's definitely some better ways to measure because typically with YouTube, you can't measure anything, right? You can measure the stats on YouTube, but you can't measure the things that are happening that you can actually integrate. So one of the cool things, and I'm just going to pop up a few of the other companies that have great video hosting tools. These are just some Vimeo, Vidyard, Brightcope, they just kind of vary in features and benefits. But the great thing about all these tools, and I think all of them, I know like three of these, you can actually integrate with your CRM. So my point earlier of, hey, YouTube, you can't really get the stats. But if you integrate with your CRM, if that contact is in your CRM, let's say it's Salesforce or HubSpot, and you've got this integration with Wistia or Vidyard, you can see if that prospect, right, that or even that customer watched the video. Yeah. And um, one of the big misnomers is so often we will uh, talk to companies saying, well, I'm going to use YouTube because it's free and it's the world's right. largest search engine. And that's that's a, that's a myth in order to rank in order when you're putting your videos on YouTube in order for you to rank um, and get your videos seen, you have to have a lot of subscribers. You have to have those subscribers liking your content, which is what drives it up. Um, and uh, you've got to be adding a lot of videos and that's a lot of work to do. Uh, most companies, most marketing teams we work with just don't have the bandwidth to have a separate strategy to drive and rank on YouTube. So we highly recommend that you look at one, make sure you're measuring it. If you're not measuring it, it you really have to question if it's worth doing. But I will tell you, that's something we see a lot that, you know, poor marketers are so damn busy trying to do so many things, doing more with less these days that, um, they many times just don't have the bandwidth to start measuring it, but it's really important. It's one of those things that put it on a spreadsheet and you want to understand what's resonating. Uh, and so th as you start to develop and create more video, you now understand what's working, what's not. Um, not everything works, um, but it's a, a really great way to be able to continue to, to optimize and make better video content and understand where it's playing well and where it's not. Yeah, and we get it. Uh, video is not easy to execute. It's one of the best marketing assets you can leverage, but it's not easy to execute. And to your point, Kelly, guess what? Leadership's going to ask at some point, what is this? Like, what's the ROI? What's the metrics? You know, what are we doing here? And you can't really capture that. I mean, you can capture the metrics on YouTube, which is great, but most of them, hey, want like business style of metrics, right? So if you could get one of the tools that I mentioned up here, right? It's an investment, but it's going to show you those better metrics, right? If you can take back to leadership to say, Hey, we sent out this email blast. We linked up this video, um, of the hundred people, you know, 50 of them actually watched the video and here's the metrics behind it. Right? So that's the sort of stats that you can get if you have that video hosting tool. And I'm happy to share links, um, after this LinkedIn live, or we can put it in the comment section 
uh, of this LinkedIn Live if we need to. Um, but it's definitely going to upgrade the look of your website, the video player. And so it's definitely just something we typically recommend when we're putting videos together. Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Well, I think we're at an end. Kelly, is there anything that we missed that you wanted to cover? I don't think so. Just, just some key points. Uh, don't be so focused on creating the video that you forget or don't uh, really uh, put more effort into how to amplify it, which channels. And um, also, if you're not measuring it, you have to question whether it's whether, whether it's worth doing. So. Good stuff. Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining. If you missed the first part of this LinkedIn live, the great thing about LinkedIn is it's going to be on this same link and it's going to be running post this LinkedIn live. So feel free to check it out when time permits. Bye everyone. Excellent. Bye. Thank you.